Okay, I'd like to bring the meeting to order. This is the Historic District Commission. Um, uh, the date is uh, November 12th. Time is 4:15. Um, this meeting was it was um, noticed in the Fairfield Citizen October 30th. Um, the designation of alternate voting is going to be Bohan, Clark, uh, Raymond Locke. And if um, we can just go around and take the attendance quickly. Jesse Bohan, alternate commissioner. George Clark, alternate commissioner. Margaret Kufferman, commissioner. Rosina Negron, commissioner. Uh, Darren. Oh, you're muted. We just wait for Darren. This is her first meeting. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. okay. So just to just um, state your your name and position. Uh, Darren Raymond Locke, alternate member. Thank you. And Adam Cliver, commissioner. Um, before we start, I'd like to um, to welcome uh, Darren Raymond Locke. She's this is her first first uh, day on the commission as an alternate. Um, and uh, she'll be moving into to a commissioner role uh, next month, but for now she's a tonight she's a, an alternate. So welcome, Darren. And then uh, also thank you to Margaret for all her years of service. This is her last um, meeting, which is sad. I'm <laughs> and, really uh, sad, we're gonna you, Margaret. I'm gonna miss you guys. We're gonna miss you. Yeah, it's gonna be weird to not be there, but you guys will do great. <laughs> I'll miss you. Yeah. And we'll miss you. Okay. So we'll get on with, with your last meeting. This okay. Um first item on the agenda is Old South Old South Road <clears throat> LLC, 171 Old South Road in Southport. For property located in 171 Old South Road in Southport. For A a new porch, B new dormers, C new pool, D pool mechanicals, E generator, F pool fence gates and wall, G walk-in patios, H outdoor kitchen, I <clears throat> change windows, J lighting, and K change driveway. I believe. Good afternoon, Adam, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good afternoon, uh, it's Jack Franzen here representing Fred Ryan. I think Fred is trying to listen in on the phone. Unfortunately, he had to quarantine, so. Uh, uh, house at 171 Old South Road. The house is located in the hand and it's uh, listed in the handbook as having been designed around 1924. It's located on the south side of the street and it's one house in from the southwest corner of Old South and Willow. The most noticeable from the public way are the changes to the north elevation, and I'm gonna share my screen here.
Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay, yep. great. Yep. Oops, wrong. Okay. So uh, this is the north elevation of the house. We're proposing to um, add a portico to the existing masonry stoop. The portico is proposed and detailed in uh, colonial revival style. Uh, and the porch would be similar. Actually, George Clark, who's right across the street, has a porch that's very similar to this. I, I think it was designed by Cameron Clark. This one is a little, little less ornate. Um, across the street, uh, you can see it's, you know, got a low pitched roof. It's got columns. It's all wood. Going to be painted. And the purpose of it is to protect the front door and the stoop from the elements. And if you go down Old South Road, you'll see, I think there, there are about 12 homes with porches on Old South Road. So it's it's an anomaly and that it, it's one of the few homes that does not have a porch. We're also proposing, uh, proposing to replace the front door and side lights. The new door and side lights will be all wood and will match the existing, except that the glazing will be SDL construction. We're proposing a pendant light that will replace the existing sconces. And the new light will actually be a duplicate of the one that you you if you went to the property you saw it on the side porch it's a copper lantern um and it um we're just going to duplicate we're going to get a copy of that lantern there will be a bluestone walk connecting the stoop to the driveway we're proposing to add three dorm heated and conditioned space the dormers will bring light into the existing bedroom. The, the middle dormer um, goes into uh, the new bathroom and the dormer on the right goes into sort of a sitting room rec room. And again, the detailing and style will be clone. Converting the layout from six over six to six over nine. So the windows will have the same pane size and the same proportion of panes as what you see on the existing. Um, I'm gonna go back to the site plan for a sec. So this is the sidewalk that we're proposing. Um, we're also proposing a fence. Uh, part of the application um, is to uh, is to build a gunite pool, a 16 by 32 gunite pool at the rear of the property. And if this is approved, they, they will require a, um, a pool fence. So what we're proposing to do is have a continuation of the type of fence that you currently see over here on the left side of the driveway to complete that pool fence. There'll be gates here for equipment to get in. We're also, um, proposing to uh, locate the pool equipment there and the generator. And there's already, that's where all the mechanicals are now. There's a Bilco hatchway. There are two AC units. And actually there's a really dense holly hedge that wraps around all that stuff. And I think we can probably just move those holly bushes out to be in front of the fence if this is all approved. And it will do a great job of, um, of screening, and I'm sure you'll stipulate it as such. Um, we're proposing um, a patio and a short walk over here in the rear, and also a barbecue. Uh, any portions of, of this that you can see, they're behind the house, but you probably could see part of the barbecue, and maybe you could see part of the walk. I, I'm not sure, but they'll be bluestone. Uh, except for the pedestal of the grill will be stone, field stone, that's going to match the, um, the stone on the house. Um, the, ca the countertop and coping will be granite. Uh, we're also proposing two hurricane lanterns on top of the pedestal uh, of, of the barbecue. 
we are modifying the Orland Stone driveway to align with this fencing in the back and with the, uh, the gate that's going to be the, uh, I guess you'd say the easterly portion of the pool fence. Again, it will match the existing cedar fence on the left side of the driveway. Um, we will, um, everything in the, in the um, application that's being proposed that's uh, involved with carpentry will be real wood. Also, the windows will be wood, but they will be SDL uh, construction and, sh and shingles will be wood. Uh, lighting fixtures will be patinated copper. And uh, at this point, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Oh, I've got some. I do want to show you. Uh, that's the barbecue. That's the pedestal. The uh, front of the barbecue will be teak planks. Forgot to mention that. Um, this shows you the plan of the attic, just in case you think the dormers are um, there for some frivolous purpose. This dormer goes into the existing bedroom. This goes into the new bath, and this goes into the sitting room. And this is the hurricane that's proposed for the um, for the barbecue. This is actually not, I've got a better picture of the stone. This is a generic picture of stone. This is the Generac generator that's being proposed. And I'm going to show you a picture that I took today. This is the stone that's on the house. It's actually, you know, a mixture of, of uh, field stones of different colors and tones. And it's got a grapevine joint on it. So we're going to match that on the barbecue. And I think that's everything. I'll answer any questions if you have them. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Um, Rosita, do you have any questions? No questions at the moment. Uh, Margaret. Margaret, you're muted. Well, now we know the mute works. <laughs> um, my question is um, the spacing of the dormers. Is there a reason why you chose to center the dormers over the windows below versus um, centering them over the space between the two windows below? So in, in essence, moving them apart a little bit. Yeah, it really it really relates to the to the spacing, you know, where the, you know, I think it works better for where the bed is in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. the, one, the one in the middle, you know, is going to go there anyway. Yeah. Um, I suppose they could be spaced alternately between the windows, but, you know, I've seen it done both ways. So I, th I think this will <clears throat> maybe afford a little more privacy. That's my only question. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Margaret. Um, and Chris Shea has joined the meeting. I saw that he joined uh, shortly after the, the hearing started. So, Chris, do you have any questions? Hi, everyone. Yeah, um, just, Jack, again, going back to the um, the site plan, um, the, the, um, the lighting that you've indicated. So, there isn't really any lighting indicated around the pool or anything, and I just wonder, um, is there a desire for more lighting or um, is this all we're going to see? Uh, I should explain that um, because of the way that the, um, the calendar worked this month, we actually had an application into ZBA for relocating the garage and part of the garage application is to basically, basically, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but we're proposing to move the garage back 
to uh, there's a beautiful specimen oak tree here on the property. If that application is approved, then we we will move the garage back and there'll be a patio associated with the garage. And I believe there will be uh, we, we would propose some lighting fixtures on the garage and also on the part of the garage that faces the pool. But you, I can't show you that today because we don't know if we're going to get approved. So for now, we're just we're living with the existing garage, the existing pergola, and the existing patio, <clears throat> and and not asking for any more lighting than what you see on this application at this time. Okay, and then um, this is the same question I had last month: the generator cut sheet that you provided does not indicate which generator you're proposing. It's got a, you know, an, an, it's got all their models. Um, and I yeah. just wondered if you, if you could specify which one you're proposing to, to use. I'm, I'm thinking it will be the 30K. Okay, and is that a liquid cooled model? Yeah, you're probably getting out of my pay grade, Chris. Well, they're they're just quieter. Uh, they run yeah. at a lower RPM. Yeah, I know mine at home is not that big, and it's uh, air cooled. It's very quiet. But um, what we're proposing oh, actually, is the, it does it does say liquid cooled on it. It just didn't have mm -hmm. the uh, the yeah. size of the model. But you're okay. thinking it's the 30, 30 kW. Thirty kW. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jim Bohan. Yeah, um, thanks for that front door. Uh, uh, that, that looks like it's going to be lovely. My my only concern is the pool visibility. Uh, let me see if I can call up a photograph. I have. Bear with me. Is that visible to you folks? Nope. You're trying to share your screen, Jim? Do I have to unshare my screen for? Uh... I don't think so. But maybe you should. I'm going to unshare it here. What What I'm concerned about is the visibility. That, that, this piece of property slopes down. It looks like it slopes down from Old South Road. And if you look at that tree, the lowest branch of that is 15 feet or more. So I'm just concerned about how high those shrubs have to be to conceal the pool. Jim, I think I think you have a point, which is that there um, there's a gate, and and obviously we can't put shrubs in front of the gate. Where yeah. where I have the shrubs located, I, I think we'll do a good job of hiding the mechanicals. But if you were to stipulate some shrubs that are sort of at the rear of the property, um, you know, like if if we planted some shrubs right in here, you know, we could. There's a big, there's a big, huge maple tree here, and you're right. The branches are very high. That's a, they're, almost they're as big high. as the oak tree. Yeah, and it, it, it's 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 not the same problem that well, it, it's it's a different problem. But the problem on Wesley Road was, you know, the the shrubs that tree branch is a good fifteen feet above. The ground, at least maybe twenty feet. So that's not going to give you any cover. It it looks like it's very concealing when you look at the plot plan, but there's there's nothing below fifty feet. So I I just I, I just add that word of caution because Old South Road is such a gorgeous street. I hate to see it. Uh, Defective. Yeah, I guess I guess uh, well, like I said, if you want us to add some shrubs in this area between the maple tree and the pool, I don't think you'll I don't, yeah. I don't think you'll see the pool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I I think that'd be worthwhile, Adam. Yeah, and it's 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 flat. It's relatively flat. It probably does slope down a little bit, but it's yeah, it's about as flat as it gets yeah. in Southport. Any other questions, Jim? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Darren. Any questions? Um, I just kind of have one. The side that you're placing on either side of the front door are those original? The side lights, uh, I, I'm not sure, Darren. They they might be. Um, I think that the, uh, I think they they very well might be. The door I don't think is original, but the side lights are, and they are uh, single glazed. Is there any way to look into to saving those and maybe looking into a company that does take those, protect them, and, and give a second glaze? Yeah, we could, you know, if you wanted to so uh, d defer that portion of this, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I know we did that on the, actually the next application that I have, we are in the process of doing that on those windows and we're in touch with the company. I forgot the name of them, but they basically take the muttons and they, they, um, they make it so that you can, you can reuse the existing sash and, and still have insulated glass. Yeah. I believe it's the company name. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the company. Yeah. Because it would just be a shame to lose the some of the original integrity that the house has. Um, same with the glass, but you know, if, if the muttons can be saved at, at the very least. Yeah, yeah. You could so, if you could certainly so stipulate. And that that headpiece that's over the door, we're saving that, which which is miraculously in relatively good shape, even though it's it's not protected by anything. Okay, that's my only question. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't have any questions, Jack, but I do think that um, you know we'll probably stipulate screening, obviously for the mechanicals and the pool, um, but also uh, a mock-up of the stone wall. Um, before it's built. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that's fine. Maybe screening for the pool at, at the same time. And I and I don't know what you were talking, what you meant by deferring the front door. I mean, do you want us to deny it, so that, or just stipulate that this? Might I think if you stipulate what what we just discussed, that would be preferable, so we can start moving okay. forward because all this stuff is going to, as everyone knows, it's hard to get stuff done now. Okay, we can stipulate that. Okay, um, I have no other questions. Um, and I did not receive any emails in favor of this application, and I did not receive any emails against this application. So the hearing is closed. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the second item on the agenda is Pierre and Ode Ergu. Pronounced that correctly, 418 Arbor Road in Southport for property located at 418 Arbor Road in Southport for a uh, new, new roof solar panels at main upper roof area. Good afternoon, yeah. Jack Franson here again representing uh, Pierre and Oud Farragou. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. For the alternates, Clark will be um, voting on this application. We are proposing uh, installation of photovoltaic solar panels on the roof at 418 Harbor Road. <clears throat> this house is described in the handbook as the Zalman Wakeman House. It's one of the most prominent examples and, and, and one of very few examples of the uh, Second Empire style in the Southport Historic District. And, I, and, a, and in fact, I hope that we'll lend some support to this request. We are planning an array of 29 panels that you can see in this site plan. Uh, they're LG yeah, they're Neon 2 out. panels. Yeah, and, um, not saved or shared. You can't see it? 
I know it's not Sharon. Okay. There we go. How's that? Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, you can see there are 29 panels, these little rectangles that you see on the um, on the site plan. Uh, they're LG neon two panels, and they're to be attached to the roof with clips in such a way that the individual panels will be parallel to the respective roof plane, so they're not tilted um, off the um, plane of the roof. And they're only about five to six inches above the roof plane. Nine of them are on the rear, and I don't think they will be visible at all. Uh, the remainder are on the um, east, north, and south portions of the roof. As you probably know, the typical Second Empire style home um, has one of its defining uh, character defining elements is a mansard roof. The mansard design, by its nature, it maximizes the cubic volume of the upper story and um, basically diminishes the acuteness of the angle um, that would allow you to see that upper roof. So that, you know, you're really not supposed to see it. It's, it's uh, I think it was a way of, of getting more space into a building by basically turning the roof into a wall. And um, the proposal here is to uh, install the panels on that upper low pitch roof and keep them a little bit back from the edge as much as possible. In some cases, it's six inches. In other cases, it's a foot, depending on the roof plane that we're dealing with. In addition to the topography around the house and along that stretch of Harbor Road in the immediate proximity of the house, um, it further reduces the acuteness of the angle because you just, you know, you can't get high enough to see any of that roof. There are some small stretches of Harbor Road going north and going south of the property where the elevation is low enough to catch a glimpse of that upper roof where you can see not only would you see the solar panels, but there's some plumbing vents and I think exhaust fans that have always been there. And frankly, I hadn't noticed in decades of traveling that road, I had never noticed that you could see any of that upper roof. But but you but you can um, for an instant as you're heading north and again as you're heading south. I believe the proposed uh, installation is entirely compatible and in harmony with Section 7-147F of the enabling statute where it states that solar installations cannot be denied unless there's a substantial impairment of the historic character. And in this case, I don't, you know, it's my opinion that there's no impairment of character since the um, panels are located on a portion of the, of the architecture that's not intended to be character defining. And I don't think you, in, in, from most angles, you won't see them. Uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, I don't think there are many other buildings in the district where solar installations such as this would be more compatible with with that um, that clause in the in the enabling statute. Um, I'm going to go through the drawings here. Here's a bigger a bigger view of the existing roof, and you can see you almost have to be in a drone to see. To, to get a good shot of that upper roof. This is the plan showing at a bigger scale where the panels are intended to go. And uh, this is a section showing you how these things lay almost flat to the roof. And there's a product brochure here. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Margaret? I have no questions. Thank you. Okay, Chris? The, um, so the 
The total projection above the roof, I think you said it's about five or six inches. Yes. Um, and while you don't think that the roof is a character defining element of the home, and I would differ with you on that, I think it is. Um, but I wondered um, when you when you are able to look at those as you drive north and south on Harbor Road for you know a brief moment, um, your feeling, I guess, is that that doesn't really affect the character of the of the entire home and and then partially the district itself. Yeah, I guess I guess that's what I'm saying. I think the purpose of that that uh, stipulation in the enabling legislation was exactly for this purpose. That you know, if you can install solar equipment in a, in a way that's minimally invasive, you know, and, and my I'm not saying the, the I, I think the mansard roof is very character defining. What I'm saying is that that flat portion. Is really is is really not part of the story there. It's it's not intended to be seen. In most cases, you wouldn't see it. And and on this particular piece of of uh, topography, I think it's almost impossible to see. So you're right. I mean, when you're driving down the street, if you look at um, the house from the dip, um, you know, to the to the north, and there's another dip to the south, you do catch a glimpse of the. I guess it would be the south and north roof planes briefly, but it's not hiding the um, it's not hiding the the, uh, the the more vertical curved sweep of the roof that I that you would all associate with Second Empire architecture. And um, I think that was the purpose of this statute. That you know, there's good, there's going to be some kind of impact, but it's what they want, what they're looking for is for it to be minimal and and non invasive. And I think. This meets the the test. Okay. And I know the commission has been struggling with this, but I think this would be one of the few situations where it's not. Um, I, I don't see any conflict with the with what's in the regs. Okay. Thank you, <clears throat> Jim. No questions. Thanks, George. Yeah, no questions, Jay. And Darren. Just one quick question for Jack. Um, how do they attach to the roof? I I didn't really see a huge glimpse of them when I was driving ice, so I'm not terribly concerned about visibility, but I know some of them can be sort of sometimes a little bit invasive to how they attach to the roof, and I just want to make sure it's not this is not one of those. Yeah, that upper roof is a membrane roof. I don't. Okay. It's, it's probably pretty old. The roof was. I I actually was around when this was done. It was the Adams family owned this house, and they hired a contractor from Bridgeport who was who was a preservationist, a very very wonderful guy who. Did all the slate? He did all the flashing. He completely uh, fixed the roof. I would say it was in the early 1980s, and I, I, I don't think that membrane has been replaced since then. Um, so, so part of this would be to, um, you know, to, you know, if they, if they have to replace the membrane, you'll see a repair certificate. But it's like a pitch pocket. There's a an attachment uh, like a galvanized or stainless steel clip that's that meets the wind load requirements for the zone we're in that attaches the panels to the roof and there's a little bit of airspace underneath them so that um you know water can't get trapped and leaves can't get trapped and such but it's it's a very low rise installation you can see from this little detail here that's with a camera sitting right on the roof. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be sure that, you know, the installation isn't going to degrade the roof or, or hurt the structure itself. That's all. Thank you. Good. Thanks. And, and uh, Jack, I don't have any questions, but um, 
I think if there was a, uh, a situation or a condition where um, solar panels um, would be acceptable in a historic district, this is probably the best example you could get. You know, a mansard roof with basically a flat roof on top, and I don't think you can see at all any of them. To be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially that was my feeling. I mean, I kind of lucked out here because I think if. You know, almost any other house in Southport, other than maybe the Myers house, which is also a second empire, it would be really tough to uh, install panels. Uh, anything like this. So, yeah, and the people are French, so I mean, I think they bought this house. They knew what they were getting into. Yeah. Okay, well, it looks great. Thanks. Um, uh, there was, I did not receive any letters in this application. I didn't receive any emails um, against this application. So the hearing is closed. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. I don't you didn't ask me. However, I don't have any questions. Oh, sorry, Rosina. <laughs> Do you have any questions? I'm reopening the hearing. <laughs> no, I just said I don't have any questions at the moment. So. Okay. Thank you. I apologize. There's so many of you now that it's like hard to keep track. Um, I'll figure it out though. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, Andrew and Michelle Adams, 564 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 564 Harbor Road in Southport for A, four additional pathways on the front terrace steps, two pathways at driveway pillars. Um, remove, see, remove, move one path light at driveway courtyard. D, add one new path light in driveway courtyard. And E, add two new path lights at top of driveway. I'm recusing myself. See you shortly. Okay, Margaret's recusing yourself. And the um, alternate sequence is Raymond Locke and Bohenham both on this uh, application. Christina, you have to unmute yourself. Is that better? Yeah, you Can go. you hear me now? Is that good? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Christina Gates, the landscape architect representing Michelle and Andrew Adams um, on our application as outlined by Adam for additional lighting at the front of their house. Um, as most of you have known, we've presented lighting plans for this property in the spring and in the middle of last year in 2019. Um, since then, the Adams have moved into the home um, approximately a year ago. And um, I think they moved in around Halloween actually. And so they've spent the better part of a year um, using the property and they came to me and asked um, for additional lighting in the front. Uh, in our initial applications last spring, um, we had some up lights and down lights, which I quickly learned is something that um, the HDC does not uh, really like to do. So we removed those and we scaled back some lighting in the rear. Um, so, and then we installed the path lights in the front as we had presented it in that initial application. Um, in this application, we would like to add some more lights um, to the front walkways into the courtyard and the driveway. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. I've never done this before. So do I go to share my meeting window? Is that how it works? Uh, no, share and then share screen. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. So am I sharing my screen? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just no, sharing you're myself. Sharing your meeting. You, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're sharing right. your meeting window. Okay, hold on. So, what do I do? I exit out of this. You click. You so click share. Sharing. Okay. Yeah. Click share. Share. And then on the mm -hmm. top, it says share screen. It doesn't give me that option. When I go to share, it say only screen? says share meeting window. Um, um. All right. Well, can can you share my drawing? Is that easier, or we can try yes. a different way? I, I can, I can. Um, okay, even just a site plan. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know why it's not working. Audio, video. Oh, 
we can do a tutorial okay. another time. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. so if you go to the next drawing, number three. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so um, if you look at uh, Harbor Road, which is on the right, there's the main set of stairs um, that cuts up to the front of the house. In our original application, um, we had one at the top and one at the bottom on either side to try to cast light across the stairwell without putting too much light um, on that space. And it's the same condition on the other side the stairwell that leads up to that main terrace. Uh, what they've found is that it's just, it's just too dark. Um, for people coming up and down. And even Michelle uh, mentioned at Halloween, um, she was gonna put out some little paper bags or something so that she could light that area a little bit more safely. So what we're proposing here is kind of a more uh, symmetrical uh, lighting. So two on each side at the bottom and at the top of both of those um, spaces. So that would be item A. Um, item B uh, would be by the driveway pillars. So Adam, if you just scroll the drawing down a little bit. Yeah. Um, behind the driveway pillars, we wanted to put two lights there because because we didn't have that down light in that large tree on the corner, that area is quite dark um, when you enter the property. Um, and in adding, wanting to add those two um, path lights, um, you can see there's an X on one of them that says PL. That is the item where I wanted to move that remove it or move it to where it's number four onto that corner. Because what, what's happening is people are backing up and there's that big tree right there. So that path light will kind of illuminate that corner a little bit more. So that's the, um, the CD uh, item on the application. And then the last item is at the very top of the driveway. Um, as you've seen, uh, that driveway is, I wouldn't call it super steep, but it's steep enough that we put a bluestone curb on one side to make sure someone doesn't drive back down it incorrectly. And they really felt that having um, two lights there would make it feel a little bit less uh, daunting coming back down that driveway. They're not, um, they go into the barn uh, frequently, but they don't keep that barn light on um, constantly. So these two um, path lights would really help illuminate that area. And again, in our first application, we had a down light in the large tree at the top of the courtyard, which is actually gone. Um, but it's quite dark up there at night. So those would be the last two path lights. And these are all lights that are quite low. They're below 16 inches and um, they don't cast a lot of light, but they definitely will show you, you know, where the driveway is and kind of give you a little bit of a safer uh, egress um, into the property. So um, that's our application. I'd be happy to, uh, you know, review it with you. I drove around uh, the village um, at night a few weeks ago to take a look at some houses. There are a couple that are very well lit. Um, I don't think this will be nearly quite as lit as those houses, but um, definitely an improvement for Michelle and Andrew. So, okay, thank you. Um, um, you have any questions? Chris? Uh, hi, thanks for your um, for your description of the application. And um, I, uh, the only question I had was on the application, you've got quantities that I think were from the previous application. And I guess there may be totals. So you're really only asking to add um, four path lights at the front step and three at the driveway entrance and then it's, two in the back yeah. of the driveway? It's a total, I'm sorry about that. I just didn't, I should have put a little cloud revision around the original key. Um, it's a total of eight new lights because one light is just being moved. Right. Okay. And then, and then the step lights, are they mm -hmm. not part of this application? Oh, those were, those are um, already installed. Those were part of the previous I, I application. Right. They're, they're on this. So I just wanted to clarify that they're, they're not any, that this is not a, a new application for more step lights. 
No, it is not. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Jim? No questions. Thank you. George? Um, no questions. Thank you. Darren? Just one really small question. The, so the lights, this, the specs that you sent for the lights, it looks like, um, I know they're not, but they look like those solar lights that you can just push into the ground. Is that in essence what, they're not, you know, being seated in concrete or anything. They're literally just being pushed into the ground. Well, no, they are hardwired. Um, oh, they're, they're not solar lights. Um, but they don't they need to be set particular... concrete to... No, 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 no. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Rosina. No questions. And Margaret is recused. I don't have any questions, Christina. Um, okay. Looks fine to me. Um, I did not receive okay. any emails in favor of this application. I didn't receive any emails uh, against this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Chris, I'm going to be recusing myself on the next application. Do you have the notice to, to read or do, would you like me to read it? Um, I have the notice, but I, it's not in the order that the meeting is running. So I, I guess I don't have it's, the agenda. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the, the, um, it's the 1st item on the notice. 780 Arbor Road. Johnson and 7, 780. 780 Arbor Road. Yeah. Okay. All and right. The alternate sequence is Clark Raymond lock on this application. So. It's all yours. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item. Is for Jonathan and Daniel Siegel. 780 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 780 Harbor Road in Southport. Item A, remove existing gabled roof. Item B, remove existing windows. Item C, remove existing door. Item D, new raised roof and dormers. Item E, new wood windows. Item F, new wood doors. Item G, new stone terrace and item H, new wood overhead garage doors. Is there someone here to present this application? I'm, I'm here to present um, and represent Jonathan and Danielle um, for the proposed garage uh, renovation on 780 Harbor Road. Um, my name is Virginia Tupker. Um, they are proposing to um, renovate the existing garage. It's not a historic structure. It was probably built in the 1990s when the house was renovated. Um, currently, the garage is a four car garage with cars parked two uh, um, to back. Excuse me, just, I'm gonna interrupt for just a second. Uh, for the benefit of those of us who do not have the plans in front of them, would you be able to share the plans or the application on your screen? Yes. There you go. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and at the top, you have the existing and then below the proposed. Um, and I can zoom in. Um, to show you, um, so currently it's a 4 car garage with 2 um, cars parked um, too deep front to back. And we propose to convert the garage into a 2 car garage with a game room and a bathroom on the 1st floor. And then we propose adding offices to the second floor. We would like to raise the existing cedar roof and add dormers on the front and the back and remove all the existing windows and doors and replace them with new wood windows and doors. All the exterior siding and roof materials will match the existing materials. The windows and doors will be made of wood and the manufacturer will be either a Marvin or possibly Little Harbor. Garage doors, um, the new ones will be made of wood as well. Uh, we haven't determined the manufacturer yet for those. Um, so if we look here on the south elevation, um, we're gonna be replacing those two garage doors as you see here. Um, and we'll add three new casement windows to the second floor. Currently the roof is like this and we'll be adding 
these three windows here. Um, on the west elevation, this is the existing, and this is what we're proposing, um, a new door um, with more fenestration, and then a second window will be added here. Um, and then on the north elevation, this is the existing, and um, we'll be adding four new doors and two new casement windows. Um, and this faces the back garden, so it's the least visible from Harbor Road. It's facing towards the back of the property. Um, and the, on the east elevation, uh, we would like to replace one casement window here. And we'll be removing or hope to remove this window on the side. Um, um, I think that's um, pretty much the scope of what they would like to propose. Um, are there any questions? Okay, great. Thank you very much for your application. Um, is Margaret available? I can't see everybody in the meeting. Yes, I'm here. I have no questions. <laughs> okay. Um, Jim, do you have any questions? No questions. Nice presentation. Great. And um, George, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I don't have any questions, but thank you. Rosina? No questions. Darren? No questions. Um, who did I miss? I didn't miss anyone. Great. I had just one question. Um, you, so you've got a, a new, some new exterior doors indicated, and um, I didn't see any lighting indicated on the application. Any exterior lighting, do you have any plans for that? Not at this moment, no. Okay, so just so we're clear, that's, that's not part of this application and um, it would need to come back before the commission if you, before you put any lighting on the, uh, on the structure. Okay, understood. Okay, um, any commissioners have anything further to ask on this application? Okay, and I'm gonna um, ask Adam to join back in because I assume we hadn't received anything for or against, but Adam would know that and I wouldn't. That's Thank you. That's, that's correct, I didn't, I didn't receive any letters for or against this application. Okay, great. So then the hearing is now closed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, Matt O'Connell and Drew Coyne, 175 Old Post Road in Fairfield, a property located at 175 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, an in-ground pool, B, fences and gates, C, associated walks and patio, and D, pool equipment. You're, you're on mute, uh, Matt. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. There you go. Okay, perfect. Um, and I'll share my screen as well. Sorry, I'm just looking. Uh, I might not have the permission turned on for it. Um, so while I figure that out, I'll start talking. Um, uh, so thank you, uh, as, as the commissioner mentioned, um, we're proposing um, a, um, a gunite pool, um, 16, or excuse me, 15 by 32. Um, the uh, installation of a, a fence. Excuse me, Matt. Yes. Can you, can you, are you having trouble sharing? Yeah, I was screen? trying to share, um, yeah, it's saying I don't have the right permissions set up. Let me try. You should be able to. If you can't, I will, if you like. Um, that would be great if you wouldn't mind. Sorry, I'm just not sure where to get the permissions turned on for it.
Thank you very much. Sure. Um, and if you wouldn't mind just zooming in a little bit on the, the left-hand side, yeah, perfect. Um, so as you can see um, here in the plan, um, we're proposing um, a, an in-ground um, gunite pool um, with an 18-inch uh, bluestone coping. Uh, the pool itself is um, uh, 15 by 32. Um, we're additionally uh, looking for approval for um, the uh, patio at the, the rear of the pool. Um, the intention for this patio is just enough space for a few um, loungers, uh, and this would kind of run into the existing patio um, at the back of the house um, with the same material, um, kind of a bluestone um, in, in kind of an organic um, natural setting, using natural shapes. Um, we're additionally looking for approval for um, the uh, pool fence um, at the, um, the front there. Um, the intention for this is we already have um, a, a six foot stockade fence around three uh, or about a third of the property. Um, and so we would just need to, uh, for, for codes, uh, in order to have um, the pool there, we would have to put the fence in across the front. The current plan um, is to put um, an aluminum fence there with a, a wood gate um, to match the, the current fence uh, that we have. Um, and this would be entirely screened. Um, there's about a, uh, an eight to 10 foot um, uh, hill from the, the road. And so the intention there is to have in front of the fence um, a laurel hedge. Um, and then at the rear of the property, you can see that we have some trees there. Those are um, some beautiful corn beans. Um, and so we would be additionally screening with, with those as well. Um, and so the fence itself would be entirely obscured um, with the, uh, the laurel hedge to tie in with some of the other hedging we have on the property. Um, and so the only thing visible would be the gate um, in the same style um, as the, the, the current fencing and the current gates that we have. Um, and then the, the last piece is um, the, the pool kind of equipment. Um, and the only um, uh, consideration that we have there is, so right now, um, and, and forgive me, Adam, if this is um, something I should have followed up on, but so when we had originally submitted this, our um, surveyor had the wrong accessory setbacks. And so when I submitted this, uh, Mr. Bienkowski with the Zoning Commission kindly informed us that we actually had uh, uh, four foot setbacks on the, the rear and the side of the home. And so right now where you see the pool equipment, it's up, it's up against the home, which we would uh, have intended to screen with um, uh, hedging. But now that we can have it further back, we would intend to put it um, essentially in the rear corner um, of the lot, so kind of where that that 24 foot pine tree is, um, it would be uh, more or less adjacent to that, and so it would be even further obscured. Um, and that is is everything on our application. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, <clears throat> Rosina. No questions at the moment. No questions. Okay, uh, Darren. No questions. Uh, Margaret? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. George? Uh, no questions. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris? Yeah, I just, um, I wasn't really clear on the fencing. And mm -hmm. I noticed um, there was talk about the, the stockade fence um, between the old post road and the new pool. But then it, it also, you also talked about um, that being screened uh, on, the, on the site plan. And um, I, it says the proposed hedge and pull fence to be tied into existing eight foot stockade fence. Could, could you just kind of run through that again for me? I, I might have missed something, but um, yeah. we're um, we're very very uh, concerned about fencing on the uh, old post road. So I just want to make sure I understand what I'm being asked to approve. Of course. So um, I'll, I'll describe um, kind of the the. the what we're asking for and then what's existing as well. So currently um, across the front um, of the home that goes along the old post road, as well as the side of the home that goes along Avalon Court, um, we have existing white picket fence um, that is there. And then from at the rear of the home along Avenue, or excuse me, Avalon Court, and then about 
um, halfway or so down um, the, uh, the, the side of the home, there's a six foot stockade fence that's already there. Um, what, we're, what we're proposing to do um, in order to get it uh, approved for the pool from a coding perspective, we would have to have a fencing in front of the pool because the existing picket fence is not high enough um, to kind of meet the, the four foot requirement. Um, and so uh, what we're proposing is a fence that ties or, or current runs into the existing six foot stockade fence um, to the corner of our home um, where we would have um, hedging in front of it to tie in with the existing hedging we have. And so that's just all we're saying is we would obscure a screen, um, the additional fence that we're inputting um, with a laurel hedge to cover that. And then behind that on the um, kind of interior side of that fence, we'd be putting additional horn beams um, to kind of tie in with the existing landscaping that we have. So the, um, the, the Vanguard aluminum fence sheet that you have submitted. Could you just say where where is that proposed? Sure. So if you see um, the the dark line with the X's through it um, in front of the yeah. pool, um, running from the corner of the home to the the side of the property where the stock stockade fence exists, um, that's where yeah. that would go. Um, if in the center there would be the the drawing of the gate that's included. Um, to tie in with the existing, uh, it would be a Cape Cod style gate with Westport style caps to tie in with the existing, um, yeah, exactly, thank you, um, to tie in with the existing fencing we have. Um, and then um, on either side of that gate where the fence would be, we would be entirely screening that with hedging. So the, the 59 foot, 59.47 foot mm -hmm. line um, with the X's through it, in at some point there's a like a double drive gate in there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, the, not, um, it doesn't show where that is, right? Sure, yes, apologies. It it would be the, the X essentially in, in the middle um is where the gate would go. So it would be right in the middle and then either side would be the, the hedge screen. Um on that on that gate um it calls for Westport style caps. Are those, um, are those, what are those made of? Um, it'll be, um, the gate itself will be made of wood and, uh, and painted white to match with the existing fencing. And what are the caps made of? Uh, wood as well. Okay. So, um, so there isn't really a, stockade fence there. So there's a stockade fence along the rear of our home um, uh, that abuts our, our neighbor's property on Avalon Court. And then about halfway down on the, um, I guess it would be the uh, kind of east side of our, uh, of our property um, abutting our neighbors um, that was existing. Um, so the stockade fence basically along kind of that back corner. Okay. Um, I'm not really clear on this at all, but I, I'm going to just pass because I don't want to take up time. Maybe everybody else, no one else asked any questions on it so far. So maybe everyone else has it. So I'll uh, thank you for trying to explain it to me. I'm still not clear. I'm not going to be voting on this application because I don't understand the fencing scope. Okay. Adam, am I voting on this one? Um, yes, you are. Have you have you asked questions? I have, you, I have, have a any question. questions? Go ahead. Yes. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I think this is the house, and, and I, I took it off Google just uh, today. Yes, but exactly. These hedges here, I don't see those anywhere in the drawing. Presumably, they are on the, the street side of the pool. The pool is going to be behind that great big hedge, right? Or, or, or do I have that wrong? So the, 
so uh, the um, the tree that's in the front no longer exists. Yep. The town had had taken that down um, as it was an ash okay. tree, okay. and then the maple tree um, uh, to its right uh, has also also been taken down as that was heavily damaged um, in the, the hurricane that came through. So where the fence okay. uh, that we're proposing um, would be from the the corner of the house across to where you see kind of that um, lollipop shaped horn beam which is where the, the six foot stockade fence currently starts. Um, and in the center there is where you would have um, the gate uh, with hedging in front. And then the horn beams that you see all the way in the rear of the property, um, we would tie those in at the front as well um, for continued screening. So you'll, you'll have a, a, stock, a six foot stockade fence then going from what's shown as this tree over to this one, which is no longer with us, right? No, so the, so the, the stockade fence already exists along the okay. rear property line. And then um, okay. our neighbor's house in the, the yellow on the left, um, basically where you see the lollipop shaped tree and the, the birdhouse is where the stockade fence already runs to along the property line between our homes. Um, okay. The fence that we are proposing is the uh, the one that was included in the application, um, which is the pool code fence that you wouldn't see as it would be screened entirely with with hedging, and the only thing you would see is the the white wood gate um, in the middle. Okay. As okay. we in the okay. application. So, so now this very big hedge. I don't know if you can see my cursor. <laughs> So a big hedge is on the far side of the pool then, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's at the rear of the property. Okay. Okay. So so the pool is going to be between this very tall bit of greenery and what we're looking correct. at. And this, and that you're saying that the the tent's going across here, covered by shrubbery, will be correct. shielding that we'll be shielding the pool from the public way. And in this case, unlike the previous installation, you, you have Mother Nature working for you in that the property is sloping up, going back from the, the road. That's correct. Okay, I think I understand. Now, thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Apologies no other questions. Clear. No, 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 no need for planning. I, I, I have a quick I, question. I, who's that? I, I have a question if, if, if I, if I may. Sure, just I can't see who's asking. Oh, it's it's Margaret. Oh, Margaret, go ahead. Um, so I just want to confirm. So so that um, that new pool fence is it extends from the front corner of the house. It's going to be flush with the front facade of the house, and it goes all the way up um, to the stockade fence, and gate will be in the center that's correct yeah okay and right now that, we have um on the, the oh sorry go ahead no that's okay go ahead um i was just going to say uh, the, the the current front corner of the house we do have um uh, shrubbery and, and hedging there so you wouldn't actually see where it uh connects with with the corner of the house because we have existing screening okay i i drove by and i i couldn't I couldn't see whether I, I don't recall seeing whether that hedging was in front of the house. So it would have to be slightly in front of the front facade in order to screen the fence, right? Is that where it currently sits? Slightly proud of the front of the house? Yep, exactly. That's correct. And and we'd be putting in um, a laurel hedge all the way across the front uh, to run into that continuously. Okay. I think I understand. I think. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I think I think we got everyone. Um, I mean, I just looking at the handbook and fences. Um, aluminum fences are are listed as one of one that is considered inappropriate. Um, now, in the case of pool fences, in the past we have allowed people to put in chain link fences that are basically embedded in a hedge. So there's so there's you know, um, a hedge on both sides and the, and the, and the chain link fence disappears within that, mm -hmm. within that hedge. Um, 
in this case, you're asking to do uh, a, an aluminum fence behind the hedges, right? Uh, correct. It would be behind the, the hedges. We're not wedded to okay, so um, to this particular fence. So if it's, I, I know that there's like the living um, screens as well, which is uh, very similar to the the chain link. So we'd be happy to uh, adjust the style. Um, it, we're intending to have it be entirely screened. Um, so if, if that would be more right. appropriate, um, we're more than happy to do that as well. Okay. Yeah, I guess the, the, the commission should discuss that. And the other thing is that the pool itself should be as, um, you know, in, in terms of the location, um, it should be placed out of the site of the public way. So in this case, you know, you're putting the pool in, the, in this location, which is um, pretty visible from the old post road. I know you're intending to screen it, but you're putting a, a gate right in the middle that's aligned with the pool. So virtually you're, you're creating a, a, a view of the pool because there's no, there's not going to be screening in front of that gate, right? Uh, correct. Although given the slope of the road, um, you, you truly can't see even without existing um, uh, kind of screening. It's, it's difficult to see what's, what's beyond that. Um, the the gate was primarily for um, for decorative to tie in with the rest. The primary entrance to the pool will be from from the rear of the home. Um, so if it's preferred that it's it's screened all the way across, we can certainly um, make that adjustment as well. Um, just the intention was to have the gate as, a, as an alternative entrance, but that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be um, required. Okay. All right. Um, other than that, I don't have any other comments or questions. Um, does anyone else have, have any further questions at this time? No, okay. Um, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I didn't receive any letters against this application, so the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, Priti and Vikram Bhutani, 480 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 480 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, extend four foot cedar fence from back end of garage to front end of garage. B, replace cedar fence with four foot chain link fence from front end of property to street on east end of property. And C, bluestone steps from existing walkway down to fence between house and garage. Hi, Adam. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, if you don't mind, can you share the, um, sure. the application? Just introduce yourself, please. Hi, um, I'm Vikram Bhutani. Um, I live at 480 Old Post Road. It's probably only the 12th time I've been, <laughs> I've been here. <laughs> um, so, um, this is just, uh, finishing up on um, some loose ends on the whole fence project. Um, we did move the white uh, picket fence to the back end of the property per uh, the uh, historic uh, commission's recommendations. And uh, um, there is some left over. Um, starting with uh, item A, um, there was, uh, so what we've uh, want to do is, um, there's a cedar fence. It's a four foot cedar fence, um, that extends, uh, from the back end of the garage where the cedar fence around the rest of the property is six feet tall and it ends at the back of the garage. And we reduced the, the cedar fence to four feet from the back of the garage to the front of the garage, but it is completely hidden. Um, by the hedge, there is a hedge that goes all the way to the front of the property, all the way to the to Old Post Road. So um, that hedge continues um, actually from the front all the way to the end. Um, and we just want to leave that um, a little bit of the cedar fence um, continuing at four feet uh, from it goes up to six feet from the back of the garage all the way to the back of the property but only four feet. That's the point of this application 
is it's about the length of the garage just being four feet tall, cedar. Um, I, if I may, I just want to go to point C. Uh, we uh, we moved the fence to um, the back of the property. Um, the picket fence, and so we added bluestone steps just going from the existing walkway down to the uh, uh, fence, um, and then point B all the way to the um, east end of the property. Uh, this was, uh, we wanted to put cedar, four foot cedar fence there, and uh, um, there was pushback from the um, historic commission that. Uh, um, there used to be chain link fence there, and uh, the chain link fence did not belong to us. It belonged to the neighbors. We replaced the entire chain link fence with cedar fence at our own cost, and um, the neighbors were all very happy with it, but um, the Historic Commission, I think uh, uh, the last uh, time we were here in, in September, um, said that the uh, cedar fence was not appropriate. And so we are proposing just putting back the chain link fence, obviously not the exact same one. We'll put the new, uh, a new chain link fence, but just a chain link fence for that section from the front end of the house um, to the, um, the, the front end of the house structure uh, to the street um, so that it'll be back to what it was before we added the cedar fence there. Bennett? Yes, sir. All right, uh, Chris, do you have any questions? No questions. Uh, Jim? I'm confused. You're saying there's going to be an exposed chain link fence going to the street on the old post road? That was what was there, uh, uh, has been there before we uh, moved here last year, and it was in very bad shape. It was gray, beaten up, and there was some shrubbery growing over it, but... Uh, I don't that's think exactly that's a very good idea. We would be more than happy to leave uh, a cedar fence there, four feet tall. Um, we really like it that way, but uh, we'll we'll do whatever we're told. Maybe I don't know the whole story, but that just seems putting a chain link fence on the old post road just seems wrong. Chris, what do you think? Hey, Jim, well, do you have questions to ask? Or? Don't want to start a general discussion. Uh, by the way, George Clark is, is the alternate awesome voting on this application. Do you have any no. questions, Jim? Are you, are, you, are you finished, Jim? So this is not one of mine, Adam? No, it's not. Any other questions, Jim? Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, George. Well, I guess I have to ask the question is why is what's wrong with the uh, stockade fence with the uh, with the wood fence that's there? There's nothing wrong with it. That's the new fence. We put a brand new cedar fence. Um, but the front the 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 part of the the house that's along the street along Old Post Road has um, old uh, has white picket fence. So the cedar fence joins the picket fence, and it was said that doesn't look very pretty if uh, the cedar fence, where the cedar fence meets the white picket fence. So, um, I mean, I know that the neighbors are going to add uh, shrubs along that. Uh, um, so if we give it a little bit of time, um, the cedar fence is going to be covered with the uh, uh, some new uh, plants and shrubs. I'd be more than happy to leave 
because I've already spent the money on the uh, cedar fence. I have no problem leaving it there. Okay. Thank you. I have no questions. All right, Darren. No questions from me. Uh, Brozina. I have a few questions. Um, the fence that is adjacent to the covered porch that initially was presented as being all the way to the back of the house, is that remaining as is? Or was there any adjustments done to that one fence? Um, so that was all a brand new cedar fence that we put in. It was old chain link fence. We replaced it with cedar fence. I'm not talking about the one that parallel to the house, but the one that's perpendicular to the house that goes from the covered porch to the cedar fence. I can share an image if you want. Yeah, that was pushed all the way back to the back of the house. Okay. To what was approved. Okay. The other thing, was the arbor ever approved or was the arbor just um, built without an approval? I don't recall that one. So, so that was uh, my error that I over, I'm going to put it in in the next month, the arbor uh, for approval. Uh, it was supposed to be in this list, and uh, I rushed to it, and I missed the arbor. But yes, I need to put that in. That's in between the garage and the house. I'm going to come back okay. and put it in again next month. Okay. I think that's all I have. Thank you. But uh, just to Rosina's point, all the three um, fences were moved back to the back end of the house. Um per the approved uh, uh, instructions of the historic district. <laughs> Margaret, do you have any questions? I don't, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is this is the, the condition that we have. This is what this is coming up. With this, with this part of the, I mean, this part of the, the fencing application, we have a, an iron fence and a white picket fence, and then we had a originally a chain link fence that was hidden back here that you couldn't really see, and then they went and put in a cedar fence, and everybody complained about the three different fences coming together. Everyone on this commission, as a matter of fact, so that's that's why. He's coming in to put in a chain link fence to return it to, to the original way it was. Um, we stipulate planting so that the fence would be hidden. Um, I mean, one could argue that there doesn't need to be a fence there at all, but um, but that's that's a different story. Um, um, regarding the rest of the application, I don't have a problem with um, with the. Uh, the hedge, or I'm sorry, the key. Sorry, I'm sharing again. With the um, this part, this fence over here, that's already it's already existing, existing, right, Vikram? Yes, and it's covered yeah, and by the hedge. Looks, yeah, and I think it looks fine, and then. And this area with with the bluestone patio, I think, is is or steps is fine. And obviously, I, the the fact that you move the fence back where you originally had it approved, I think, is makes a huge difference. Um, so I, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to sort of explain to some of the commissioners who um, didn't understand about this, specifically the chain link fence application. Um. um uh, obviously, again, I, I, I'm ha I'm happy to do whatever you guys say, but maybe if we give it a little more time and plant more shrubs, the cedar fence being covered by shrubs, because right now it's bare. In the end, a cedar fence yeah. being covered by shrubs may be better than a chain link fence being covered by shrubs. And I That's can... That's a good point. And, uh, 
I can commit to the making sure that we add lots of greenery around it. Okay, well, I think we'll, we should discuss that. The commission should discuss that aspect. Um, does anyone else have have a, any other questions? No, okay. I, I did not receive any um, letters in favor of this application and I didn't receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing's closed. Thank you, Baker. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is Brandon Konovitz, 2225 Old, po Old South Road in Southport for property located at 225 Old South Road in Southport for an installation of an in-ground basketball hoop. I'm recusing myself. See you soon. And Margaret is recusing herself. Hi, uh, Commissioner Adam. My name is Brandon Conovitz. Um, we're the new owners of 225 Old South Road. Um, would you mind sharing uh, your screen for the application? Sure. Give me a second. Um, so relatively cut and dry, we want to, we'd like to install a um, ground basketball hoop in the center of the driveway, um, which um, is pretty hidden from the street by the shrubs, but that X marks the uh, spot, which is essentially centered from a grass area um, on the north side of the driveway and a, the garage and gate the um, south side of the drive. And it's about a 10 foot, the specs are on the, on the next page, but about a, a 10 foot basketball hoop. Um, and we prefer to do this in-ground style just because of aesthetics and um, safety over the more portable weighted style. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, so with Rosina. No question. And by the way, it's uh, Raymond Locke and Bohan are alternates on this application. Um, Margaret's recused herself. Chris. I have no questions. Thank you. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, if I can share this, I it's yeah. first of all, welcome to Southport. Happy, happy, happy. Uh, Family's very happy to be there. This application made me look up when basketball was started, like 1891. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be visible from the road. I I looked at the regulations and there's no Adam the, the, the regulations are very loose on athletic equipment. Uh, it's not at all like pools. There's no requirement that the, the basketball hoop be not visible from the, from the right of way. So, um, 1891, I, I guess that's <laughs> historic enough. I'll have to uh, uh, give that information <laughs> to my kids. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be visible and, uh, I'm happy with it. I don't know the other commissioners are going to be happy. But I see no prohibition of that in the regulations. Am I wrong, Adam? I don't know, Jim. I just <laughs> ask your questions and we, we can uh, deliberate this, you know, the whether it's appropriate or not later. That, that's the only question, I, the, the only comment I have. Okay. 
Okay, thank, thank you. you. George? Uh, are you, am I in this? Well, you can you can ask questions. I mean, if you, you um, are not voting on it. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I don't. The only question I would ask was be it, it, it is kind of it is kind of right against the neighbor's property and the noise factor, but um, you know, uh, I I don't see anything wrong with it. I think uh, I like your kids, so welcome to the neighborhood. Welcome to the street. But no questions. Darren, one one more quick question, is, if, if I may, Adam, is, is that gravel? Um, yeah, yeah. it's gravel over um over asphalt which we're going to leave as is is basketball going to work on 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 that you know it's not a yes not ideal but i just don't want to put blacktop on it because i like the way it looks right so, okay thank you you got it sorry that, that's Sarah, right. do you have any questions uh just a quick question how is it being put in the grounds uh how is it you know, I know you probably have to dig a hole, but is it set in concrete, rebar? What I mean, I mean, from what I know, I'm guessing. I believe they do come and set it in concrete, and then let that post set, and then they come install the, you know, the, the apparatus. Okay, great, thank you. Sure. Great, um, Brandon. I do not have any questions, and I did not receive any um, emails in favor of this application. Uh, and I did not receive any application, any uh, emails against this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thanks again for your help with this. Appreciate it. Um, last item on the agenda, which is uh, voting alternate is Clark. And it is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Hodge, 2824 Bronson Road in Fairfield for property located at 2824 Bronson Road in Fairfield for A, uh, <clears throat> raised ridge at rear gable, eight inches, B, add dormer to south side of raised roof, C, replace existing sliding windows with painted wood French doors, D, change existing casement windows on south wall with wood push-out casements, E, expand existing bluestone terrace to the west and nine feet to the east along back of house. F, change six over six windows on north side with new wood six over nine units and wood shutters to match existing and G, all new siding, roofing and trim to be painted or stained as appropriate to be consistent existing feature of the house. <clears throat> oh, hello everybody, this is John Ozalewski. Yes, yeah, hi, can you hear me? Great, I'm yes. gonna go ahead and share my screen. I'm John Wazalewski. I'm with David Scott Parker Architects. I'm here with my um, associate, Ian Klesinger, and we're here to represent uh, Ron and Kathy Hodge. And um, we just share, there we go. Okay, and let me, uh, okay, let's just start this. Okay, can you all see that okay? And you can see my cursor move. Okay, great. Yep. Okay. So we're here to discuss the property at 2824 Bronson Road, which was recently acquired by Ron and Kathy Hodge. Uh, the house on the property, which is located, um, where'd my cursor go? There we go. The house is located near the front of the property by Bronson Road, and the original house was built in the 1880s. Um, and the work that we're talking about today is all related to the uh, to the main house, not to any of the accessory structures. Uh, this is a view uh, from Bronson Road, um, looking at the north side of the house from the northwest. And in this image, the area in question that we're working on is item F, and it's these windows off to this side uh, where we're doing work. And then this is uh, looking at the south side of the house. This is also from Bronson Road. This is the view that you see and the areas in question where we're doing work are at the back of the house. These are later additions um, that were um, added in the 20th century. And uh, there's uh, a variety of, of um, later additions that were done on the back of the house that are 
uh, in many cases, less than sympathetic to the original structure. And then this is a view from the backyard where you can keep losing the cursor. Um, sorry about that. Here we go. Uh, from the backyard, and you can see there's this sun porch addition uh, that we're doing work on. Or also, there's this wing of the house here on the first floor level that has this sort of eccentrically uh, located corner picture window. Um, we're doing work on this as well. There's also this existing chimney um, on the roof that's, that's, uh, that was added in the 80s that's being removed. Um, and we're changing some things on the back of this, uh, this later addition. So looking at the plan of the house, again, Bronson Road would be at the bottom of your page. And so uh, item F on the, with that we mentioned, we're doing work on windows in this location. And then we're doing work uh, on the windows and doors at this later addition, as well as on this uh, much later addition. And then finally, there's an existing stone patio here. Uh, some of this was uh, destroyed by a fallen tree in a recent storm, that bad storm we had last summer. So we're doing work at this end, some rebuilding, some expanding, and then also expanding that existing stone terrace down at this end here. And here's a plan of that that shows again, um, oops, uh, areas where we're putting in new windows. There were two windows before, we're adding a third. Um, and then along here, uh, there was an eccentrically placed window here. We're filling out the surface with windows, and then we're changing the windows along the addition here, filling in the terrace in back, and the tear part of the terrace towards the front. Uh, looking at the north elevation, um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, okay, here we are, we're right. Um, this is, okay, so there are existing six over six windows here and one here on this little shed, later shed addition. Uh, the proposal here is to add a third window and in all cases to change these six over six to six over nine windows, which are similar to the windows that are on the original house. So we would be removing these six over six later windows, um, adding a third one, balancing out this elevation and changing those to all to six over nine. And you can see what those would look like here, uh, here. And we would also be adding um, new wood shutters that would match the wood shutters on the original house. You can see these here. And then you can also see this one window here, which is presently six over six, that would be changing to six over nine as well. In all cases where we're change, affecting siding, so new siding would be uh, you know, patched in with, um, to match the original. And again, here's what this looks like now. And that's what it would look like proposed. And then going to the other side of the house, again, we're looking at changing, uh, lifting up the roof slightly here, changing out these uh, modern windows along this edge, and then filling in the windows along this. And then we're also going to be filling in um, areas of the terrace. And then specifically all the windows here, add these two would be operable French units with steps out. Uh, new windows all along this edge to fill out this elevation, filling in the terrace with squaring off the edge to this corner, and then also extending the terrace here. These steps would stay, the rest of this terrace would stay. And this is looking at the um, north and uh, east side of the, I'm sorry, south and east sides of the house. Okay, so along the south side, again, this is the existing sort of eccentrically placed window. Uh, and this is an mo eccentrically placed modern window that's here, as well as all of these existing sliders um, and uh, single pane uh, lights <laughs> along the sun porch here and here. The proposal is that we would take this down in order to lift up this roof line. And you can see what that would look like here. So this end here, would get rebuilt. You can see it shaded. 
uh, we would be adding this one dormer, this one shed dormer. Uh, these windows would all become uh, wood um, simulated divided light uh, with wood panels below. Would have the same thing all across the south side uh, with double units. These units would be fixed. The units right here would be operable. They all are, are um, simulated divided light, thermal pane with spacer bars, wood painted with panels below. Uh, the uh, shed dormer we would be adding above uh, are nine pane uh, casements. And then over in this area, where did it go? Here it is. Um, we would be changing these, this, we would fill out this elevation with windows. This is the part that's that's uh, sort of parallel to the rest of the other planes in the house. This little section here is angled. Uh, this would have a single door in it that would look like one of these doors. Uh, these would be um, uh, sort of, they would emulate six over six, but they would be French casements. So these are um, 12 pane French casements with wood paneling below. The um, terrace, you can see here, with this, this would get rebuilt and squared off, so it would uh, flush out with this corner of the bay. And then we would be adding this section of terrace in the back. The new field stone would match existing. And then we're also adding, uh, for safety, adding an iron rail with a bronze cap here and a handrail down the side. We bronze rail, or I'm sorry, it'd be a, a bronze cap painted black steel rail below here and a painted black um, guardrail below here. This is a detail of that bay window. And you can see, let's get rid of this aside. Uh, you can see, again, French casements above, wood paneling below, all, all painted. And then details of the railings where we have um, uh, simple square posts, uh, all painted with the bronze cap and bronze volutes at the ends. And that would run all along the top of this new wall here, and then a handrail down the side. And this is, again, uh, this is a, a view of what that would look like from the southwest. And again, a view of what that would look like um, from the back of the property, you can see pretty clearly now, uh, these are all again, uh, double French doors with, with panels below. You can see the new uh, 3D of the new proposed uh, shed dormer. And then you can see all of the new proposed uh, French casements along this with wood panel below. You can see the railing on top of here on all of the field stone wood match existing. Uh, and I think that's it. If you have any questions. <clears throat> Thank you, John. Um, let's start with Darren. One, uh, one quick question. So on the view from the sure. proposed view of the southeast of the site, could you, would you mind just pulling that back up for a second? Not at all. From this, right here. Southeast yeah, it was here. the last one you had up. Yeah, that one. So, um, on the, on the addition in the back, um, where you're bumping yes. up, the gable end with the three the three windows are is that going to match the siding above the windows, or are you leaving that with the wood panel siding above the windows? This would have wood panels below these units, and then siding above. Okay, so it would be okay. The rest of the house, absolutely, yeah. Okay. It just wasn't clear from the drawing. That's my only question, though. Understood. Understood. Yes. Above, uh, we would just have the wood, just the wood panels below the window units, and, and the gable end would all be um, shingled. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, or not shingled. I'm sorry. Clavered. Clavered. Oh. Right. <laughs> George? Um, the new steps. Is there any lighting included in that? Oh, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> uh, there will be lighting that will be part of this, uh, but it is not included as part of this application. We do understand that anything that is to be added needs to be shared with the commission in advance. They just haven't, um, there would be some decorative fixtures and they just haven't picked those out yet. The steps that are going down the, um, the side from uh, yep. the terrace, the, these 
those are existing steps. So those would not be changing. They may, uh, we honestly, we haven't discussed step lights yet. So I'll, I will get with the owner and, and make sure they know that anything else that's added has to be shared with you. Okay, uh, I have no further questions. Jim? John, yeah, nice presentation. Thank you. One quick question. Are I, the shutters you're adding, are they functional shutters? Are they functional? The, the proposed shutters? Uh, yeah. You know, I don't know if the existing shutters on the house are functional. We're not fans of non functioning shutters. We like things that John, work. May I, um, may I interrupt you for a moment? So, I apologize. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Ian. Please jump in. Yeah, I apologize. This is Ian. Uh, I work with John. Uh, the existing shutters are all on wrought iron pintle hinges. And uh, I think that we had assumed that the uh, new would match those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ian, okay, can you thank state you. your full name for, for the record? Oh, uh, Ian Kessinger. Thank you. Um, no other questions. Chris. Um, just one comment, excellent application, um, very good description and uh, explanation. Thank you, no questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Margaret? I have no questions. It's a beautiful presentation and um, I think it looks really nice. Thank you. Um, and Rosina? No question. And I didn't have any questions either. Um, I did not receive any letters of um, against this application. I did not receive any letters or emails in favor of this application. So uh, the hearing closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and that concludes. All the applications and we will go into the considerations of the, the, <clears throat> the items and we'll start with um, Old Post Road LLC 171 Old South Road in Southport for property located at 171 Old South Road in Southport for A New Porch, B New Dormers, C New Pool, D Pool Mechanicals, E Generator, F Pool Fences, Fence gates and wall, G walk in patios, H outdoor kitchen, I change windows, J lighting, and K change driveway. And I have a motion. I actually I came in um, partially through this application, so I'm going to not vote on this application. Okay, thank you. So the. <clears throat> Alternate sequence is, is Bohan Clark will be voting on this application. Thank you. So can I get a motion? I, I move we ex accept it as submitted with the condition that shrubbery be added to prevent visibility of the pool from the right of way. What? From the road. What's it? What's the motion, Jim? Except as submitted with the provision that the shrubber, shrubbery be added to prevent uh, visibility of the pool from the right of way. Oh, from public view, you mean? With the stipulation. Do we have a second? Second, <laughs> for purposes of discussion. Uh, and who says that? Margaret? Margaret, yep. Margaret um, seconds, okay. Discussion? I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't remember um, the, necess the necessity of Screening from the public way was that discussed during the application? <laughs> Sorry to ask that. 
Well, I think, I think um, we need their screening definitely needs to be um, stipulated for the fence, especially if, if we want to approve an aluminum fence. Um, okay, that's all right. That's the part that I was forgetting about. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about the aluminum fence. Um, typically, you know, when we, when we approve, uh, like a chain link pool fence, it's, it's embedded in the, in the hedge. Yeah. Um, but in this case, he's got an aluminum fence and then he's got a gate in the middle and the gates mm -hmm. align with the pool. So therefore you're going to, I mean, how much of the pool you can actually see, I don't know, but, um, I think it will be visible to some extent. And that's my concern. I, I prefer if he just, you know, planted in front of a fence and, you know, called it in. Um, how everyone else feels. So, M Margaret, just to kind of an further answer to your question, uh, in the handbook, it specifically suggests that um, in-ground pools are appropriate. However, they should be placed out of sight of a public way. So, I think that's what Jim was getting at. Okay. <clears throat> I just have one question. Are we discussing 171 Old South Road or 175 yes. Old Post Road? Yeah, that, get a that, that, I, I, that? Oh, good point. I'm my sorry, my motion I'm on the wrong project. Yeah, yeah. I was trying okay. to think my, was, we were talking Old South, but then I then we started talking further, and I was like, oh, maybe I made a mistake. I'm talking about Old Post. Okay. Maybe there's a fence on this. I thought we were talking about 171 Old. Old South Road. If that's not yeah, correct, then I, I. If that's not correct, I withdraw my motion. I thought no, you were no, talking South. about 171 Old South Road, and my comments okay. were, were directed towards the Old Post Road pool. I was one who was okay. mistaken. Um, okay. Okay. My, my motion stands. Then I say we accept the modification to 171 Old South Road. With the condition that shrubbery be added to prevent visibility of the pool from the public way. I'm just looking at the drawings on my phone, not texting. Yeah. <laughs> so, my comment since the motion was uh, presented and someone seconded, um, I do agree with the screening. I think also it was, there was a discussion about the sidelights that I do agree if um, the sidelights can remain. Uh, and then there was also a stipulation about a mock-up of the stone wall, if that can be, um, if we yes. can discuss and then revise, I think that will be okay with me, so. Yeah, I agree that the stone wall should be stipulated mock-up. And a sidelight soon. Yeah, that idea with the sidelights is a good one. Um, Jim, would you like to amend your motion? I'm, I'm happy to modify it for what Rosina brought up. If she can articulate it. Okay. So I will, if I can um, adjust that, it will be approved well, perhaps, A through K. Perhaps we, should, we should vote on this. Perhaps we should vote on this and then have a new motion. All right, all in favor? Uh, all against? Uh, Bowen Clark or George, you're voting on this? I was not on this one. Yeah, what was the motion, Adam? Chris, what does that mean? Because Chris uh, is recusing himself. Oh, He's okay. Not voting on this. Okay, so. So, so against. We have. What's the motion, Adam? I'm sorry. The mo the, you're, you, we're voting on your motion. It was your motion. Your with motion. with Rosina's modification. No. no. Okay. Oh my gosh, Jim. What are you voting on? Um, I'm, I'm, uh, voting on my motion with Rosina's modification. 
Okay, we're, no. we're just going to vote on your motion. And if it gets approved, it gets approved. If it gets denied, it gets denied. Okay. So you can vote whatever okay. you'd like, okay. but I will, we'll go, we'll do the motion again. All in favor of the, of the motion. You know, raise your hand. Anyone in favor of this, of this application, Aye. this motion? No. You're in favor? Okay, Jim's in favor. All opposed? Okay, and Margaret, Rosina, and George, and myself were opposed, so the motion fails. So, can we have a new motion, please? Okay. Can we approve A through K with the stipulation to add screening? To re, um, have the side lights on the front door remain and make a mock up of the stone wall prior to any work. I'll second that motion. Okay, more discussion. Well, there is screening. I think the side lights. I'm sorry? There is screening indicated on the drawing, so it's redundant, but that's okay. Well, yeah. not by the okay. gates. That was the issue. If you look at the drawing, there's a there's a, a gate in this one as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think Jack had suggested that they would plant some screening back towards the maple tree so that you didn't have you wouldn't have a wall of screening, but you'd have a cluster that would block the pool. Mm -hmm. All right, well the motion makes sense, so let's go with that. So, Rosina, just to clarify, it's to add screening and then to um, screening stipulate that the, side, that the existing side lights remain? Yes. Okay. And provide and then, a mock-up of the mock -up. stone wall prior to any work. Okay. Okay. And we have a second from George. George. Um, so, all in favor? All opposed, and the motion passes unanimously. Um, next item on the agenda is Pierre and Ode Garagou, 418 Harbor Road in South Fork, property located at 418 Harbor Road in South Fork for a new roof solar panels at main upper roof area. And the alternate voting on this is Clark. Okay. And I'd make a motion to accept this, uh, as to approve as submitted. I'll second that. George makes a motion to approve as presented. Second. Second. Margaret seconds. Discussion. I'd just like to say it's it's a much different application than the last one we were looking at, and it's um. Yeah, it makes complete sense. You know, I think I think we should encourage uh, solar energy if we can. In this case, it looks like we can. So, all in favor? Yes. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is Andrew and Michelle Adams, five sixty four Harbor Road in South Fork, for property located at five sixty four Harbor Road in South Fork for a Four additional light path lights at front terrace steps, B, two path lights at driveway pillars, C, remove, move, one path light at driveway courtyard, and D, add one new path light in driveway courtyard, and E, add two new path lights at top of driveway. And the alternate sequence for this is uh, Raymond Locke and Bohan. We have a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the application as submitted. That's Darren Raymond. I'll second. In the motion to approve and. Oh, sorry. Yes. In a second. There's in a second. Okay. Discussion. No discussion. Um, so we'll take a vote. All in favor. One 
two, three, four, five. All opposed? No opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Um, next item on the agenda is um, I'm recusing myself on. Um, and uh, Chris, can you take take this one? Yeah, I can. So uh, this one is um, Jonathan and Danielle Siegel, 780 Harbor Road in Southport. For item A, remove existing gabled roof. Item B, remove existing windows. Item C, remove existing door. Item D, new raised roof and dormers. Item E, new wood windows. Item F, new wood doors. Item G, new stone terrace. And item H, new wood overhead garage doors. Is there a motion? Mr. President, I'm voting on this end. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Who's who are the alternates on this? I think we're all in because uh, because uh, Adam's up. Okay. Okay. Thank thank you. No, I'm the alternate. The alternate it's Clark Raymond Lock is the alternate sequence. Okay. What do I know? A motion and to approve this presented. That's from Margaret. Is there a second? I'll second. Rosina seconds. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, it looks like we have everybody except Jim in favor. All those opposed? Any any opposed? Okay. Um, Motion, motion carries. Looks like uh, Jim did not vote on this, and Adam was recused. Thanks. Okay, um, Jim was not an alternate on that. wasn't voting on that one. So, okay, got it. it was not in right. the sequence. Right. Um, right. Item five: Matt O'Connell and Drew Coyne. 175 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 175 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, in-ground pool, B, fences and gates, C, associated walks and patio, and D, pool equipment. And this is the application I was discussing before. <laughs> so, and the, the um, alternate sequence is Bohan. So do we have a motion? For discussion, um... I'm going to say approve A, C, and D as presented and um, deny without prejudice B. We have second. Second. Margaret seconds. Discussion. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know how you can do that because you you can't put a pool in without item B, fences and gates. So I would vote against that motion. You're correct, yeah. Well, I mean, they still have to come back for, for a pool fence, obviously. Um, so a fence will have to be approved at some point. I, I think mean, it would be better a project. Fence. I think it would be better to have a, a comprehensive plan approved before they start installing a fence without an approved I'm pool without an approved fence. Okay. I mean I guess I can't argue. I feel that each um, time we have an application that includes fences, we get less and less drawings and less and less information and it makes it very difficult to to, to make decisions. So I would ask for more drawings and you know show us exactly where the gate is, all that. Just for the record. I agree. I think there right. should be something in the file that says shows what we actually approve. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um 
Would you like to amend your motion? Um, I could amend it to then approve C and D, D as presented, because if I recall now, where the drawings show the pool equipment, it's not where he indicated that um, the pool equipment was going. So in theory, and pardon me, but it might be better just to revise altogether because the associated walks in the patio have to do with the pool because they are aligned with the pool. The pool have to do with the fence and the pool equipment as presented was different as it was shown in the drawing. So. Yeah, in all other cases, we ask people to show where these things are going on the survey. So yep. we could be consistent with everyone. So maybe right, it might so be better to vote, vote and the, do a new one. Let's vote. Yeah, we'll vote on the on the motion on the table and then see what happens. Okay. So all in favor? All opposed. One, two, three, four. Who we uh oh and if who's yeah I, I'm I'm confused are we make the motion fails are we voting you know, on the pool without the fence or we're, we're voting on the I'm existing on the motion on the table motion will. Did, did you just vote on that motion or not? I think you voted. Uh, no, I, I did not vote. No, okay. no, I didn't so uh, vote at all because I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused about what, what we're okay. voting on. Do you abstain? Okay, so the motion fails anyway. Four to four against one abstention. So the motion fails. So we have a new motion. I'll make the motion make the to motion. deny without prejudice A, B, C, and D for discussion. I'll second that. Who second that? I haven't had access to A, A B, C, and D. I'm sorry. Um, let me see if I can find it. in ground pool, fences and gates, associated walks and patio, and D, pool equipment. The motion is to deny without so we're prejudice. Voting to, we're, voting to, we're voting to approve the fence no. and gate as proposed? Okay. No. no, deny without prejudice. Motion is oh, to deny oh, without prejudice. Oh. Okay. Okay. Because they all for together. Others. And we can discuss it more, but I think we've already discussed the fact that the fence is an issue and therefore it's connected with everything else in the application. So right. if we're going to deny the fence, we have to deny everything. Right. Um, so that's the rationale behind I, that. I can vote for that, sure. Okay. All in favor? To deny. To deny? Yes. All in favor, all opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda, Preeti and Vikram Bhutani, 480 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 480 Post Road in Fairfield to A, extend four foot cedar fence from back end of garage to front end of garage. To be replaced cedar fence with four foot chain link fence from front end of property street to street on east end of property and C, bluestone steps from existing walkway down to fence between house and garage. The alternate sequence is uh, Clark. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion to approve. Jim, you're not voting on this one. So okay, Regina thank made you. motion to. Regina? I'll make the motion to approve A, 
and C as presented and deny B without prejudice for discussion. And I'll second that. Second? Very good. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? George second. So it makes a lot of it makes a lot of sense that uh, what the owner indicated that he has already spent the money with the cedar fence. When we see the pictures of the chain link fence, it's covered with vegetation. So perhaps I know we all discussed this um, in the meeting in September that we didn't like the three different fencing. But if we allow vegetation to grow, we might be able to revisit this if it doesn't um, look appropriate. I think once we approve, if we, if we deny this, then, and we've already approved the cedar fence, um, and it's, 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 it is what it is, and it'll, it'll be there. It's good. You don't have to take it out. <laughs> so, I would agree, though. I think, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think no fence there would be better, but um, once the fence, you know, grays, and if there's more vegetation around it, I think it will be more hidden and, and won't have such a striking um, contrast with the other two fences as it does now. Okay. So are we ready to vote on that one? Yep. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Chris, uh, all opposed? Okay, motion passes four to one. Crochet is against. <clears throat> um, next item on the agenda is uh, Brandon Konovitz, 225 Old South Road in Southport for property located at 225 Old South Road in Southport for installation of in-ground basketball hoop and Margaret's recusing herself on that application. The um, alternate sequence is Raymond Locke uh, Bohan. So Jim, you are voting on this one. And can we get a motion? Okay, I make a motion to, to... To what? Do we have a motion? I think Jim's I make a motion. I think, I think Jim's email is uh, Wi Fi is pretty slow. Well, maybe someone else can make a motion. I, I just moved to approve it as submitted, Adam. You didn't hear me? Oh, no, I did not. Okay, do we have a second? Interesting. Okay, I'll second. Yeah, Rosina? Yeah. Rosina seconds discussion? I um you know in the in the handbook it does it does talk about uh permanent uh sporting good sporting playground uh equipment that's affixed to the ground it is regulated by us it doesn't say whether or not it's to be out of view of a public way but then it does say that movable equipment should be stored out of uh, public view when not in use. So I don't really get the distinction between a movable basketball court having to be out of view about basketball and a um, a fixed basketball uh, hoop. But um, I 
I would prefer that it not be visible from a public way. So I'm going to vote um, against this application. Any other discussion? I I agree, Adam. I uh, if I look at the words, I am vegetarian. But I, I look at the words, and there's no prohibition that it not be visible from the public right away. It, it, it's distinctly different from the pool language. The pool language is clear, but the, the sporting equipment language is. I, I don't see a clear prohibition. Yeah, I would agree. I don't. Um, I don't think it's inappropriate. I mean, it's 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 clearly a basketball hoop. Um, it's not historic, um, and it's you know I, I don't think the commission can be non-kid friendly. So you can't put a basketball hoop because you know it's in a historic district. That's kind of crazy. Um, so I don't have a problem with it. Any other comments? All right, let's take a vote on it. Adam, I, am I on this? Adam, I'm on this. Am I on this, George? No, you're not. Okay. I'm in, okay. In. All in favor? All opposed? All abstentions? So the motion passes. Um, four to one, crochet is opposed. <clears throat> um, last item on the agenda. And here we get Margaret back. Margaret, you there? Okay. And the alternate sequence on this one is Clark. Um, and it's for Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Hodge, 2824 Bronson Road in Fairfield for property located at 2824 Bronson Road in Fairfield for A, raised ridge at rear gable, eight inches. B, add dormer to south side of raised roof. C, replace existing sliding windows with painted wood French doors. D, change existing casement windows on south wall with wood push-out casements. E, expand existing bluestone terrace four feet to the west and nine feet to the east along back of house. F, change six over six windows on north side with new wood six over nine units and wood shutters to match existing. G, all new siding, roofing, and trim to be painted or stained as appropriate to be consistent existing feature of the house. And we have a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Um, items A through G. I'll second that. I'll second that. Makes okay. a motion With you, Margaret. As Margaret should second it. And Margaret <laughs> is a second. Her last second. Her last, her last victory. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Margaret. Second. Discussion? Looks nice. No discussion. I mean, I think it's pretty thorough. Um, Beautiful. Good job. Real plan. And, and it looks good. So, all in favor? Okay. All opposed? And the motion passes unanimously. Okay. So, let's move on to the rest of the meeting. Need to approve minutes from the uh, October 8th meeting. Um, Mr. Gravanis is not here. Bohan Nagran and Shea Clark are here. Do we have a motion to approve mm -hmm. minutes from the 8th? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as as written. I'll second Chris that. Shea makes a motion to approve, and George makes a second. All in favor? Um, the motion passes unanimously. Chairman's report repairs. We have 720 old post roads with the seal coat driveway, replace flat wood deck and railings in kind, replace garage asphalt shingles in kind, replace garage cedar siding in kind. 
five fifteen old post road replace asphalt roofing kind. Three two nineteen Main Street miscellaneous lot repair with wood and kind. Three oh seven old post road repair fence in kind. Uh, thirty one thirteen Bronson Road repair cedar roof on main house barn and shed in kind. Um, we have no violations. Um, with the exception of the uh, Rosina next door to you, the house next door to you, I'm sorry, what's the address of that on Old Post Road? It's. I believe it's 970. 970 Old Post Road, correct. They, they were in violation for the windows and the attic, and they came in for an application that was uh, denied. Um, so I've reached out to the town attorney to to see if we can put put a lien on the property because it's on the market. Just came on the market, and we want to make sure that it doesn't um, change hands in while well, it's in, in a violation. So that's what's happening the, with that one. Um, the frustrating part is that most of the work that has been done in the property has not come in front of the HDC prior to the work being done. So, for example, yeah. there is a patio that is very visible from the street that they just added within the last few months. So, in theory, really? something like that yeah. should have come in front of HDC. However, it continues to happen. It was the fence. It was the windows. It was the um, yep. second floor um, railing. So, it's everything. So that my worry is that it will change hands and the windows will completely disappear and we'll be stuck with vinyl windows. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, any update on the handbook? I haven't heard anything from, from, um, from um, the uh, circuit rider. She has doesn't have responded to my email. So I don't know what's going on. It's very difficult to get that uh, grant going when I'm not getting any response from her. From Mary Dunn. Mary, but very Mary slow to respond. Um, they've been. And Darren, maybe now that you're on the commission, you can help us. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly can if you'd like. <laughs> I know. It's right but Mary Dunn is very on. slow to respond. Very slow, um, and it's gotten only really worse. Non so <laughs> it, it's like sometimes they get back to you like this, and other times you can wait several months. So, what grant were you going for? She said there was a grant that we could um, apply for to help us with our handbook. Okay. Um, in, in particular, sections on solar panels, um, and we have some issues with. Um, like the brick, how that's handled, but just in general too, we're, we're considering just having someone look over the handbook and maybe update it and refine it a little bit more. Um, and that may be something you could do. I mean, I, I asked if, if you is, because you're on the commission, whether it's conflict of interest, if you are paid to do it, um, you know, if you were hired to do it as a consultant, I don't know. Um, I, that's a question for the town attorney, but I mean, I, I certainly yeah. helped in Westport, um, when they were looking over it, they're in the middle of doing their handbook revisions. Now I started it ages ago. Um, so I'm no longer involved in that, but there, there are grants that can be applied for it. Fairfield's not a CLG though, right? I don't know. I don't think it's a CLG. Um, if it was a CLG, there might be additional grants. We have the application. Yeah. I believe it's the one that she spoke to us during that meeting is the one that I forwarded you. So it might be okay. as simple as beginning to put that application together and send it to her to see how it moves from there. So. Okay. Well, I'm assuming okay. it's an each peg, so they're pretty straightforward. Okay. Well, maybe would you be willing to help us out with uh, trying to get that grant? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Since it's your first day here on the commission. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it all at me at once. Exactly. Exactly. Um, 
So, okay. Um, any and new business, we do have another alternate commissioner um, that the that the first select woman has has um, reached out to, and she's going through her. I don't know much about her, but uh, we'll find out more about her. Um, obviously, Margaret's leaving. This is her last meeting, and we're going to miss her. She's um, put in a lot of good work over the years. Uh, how, how many terms have you been on here? Probably more than more than your. Uh, yeah, your I think it's share, right. 11 years, I think, uh, I think I started yeah. in 09. Yeah. So it's been a long time. <clears throat> I'm so sad. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's well, sometimes it's hard to fit everything in, but it, I'm definitely really sad to leave and. You know, but I'm sure I'll see you guys. Yeah. I'm sure I'll be, pre be presenting something. <laughs> so I'll well, see yeah, you have to recuse yourself now, right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You've you done a great been really happy, really great to have you on a commission. Oh, thank you very much. Gonna, gonna, gonna miss you. Really gonna miss all you guys. <laughs> and Darren is a, is an alternate for for one meeting, and then she'll become a full commissioner uh, next month. And next month we're gonna have to go through the process of of voting for um, you know, chairman, vice chair, uh, clerk, and those things again. So if, if anyone wants to change things up, you know, let's talk about it so that we uh, sort of know what's going on. Um, anyone else have any new business or other business? No? Okay. Um, thanks for everyone's uh, work tonight. It was a kind of long meeting, I think. Um, but do we have a motion to adjourn? I think Margaret should make the motion to adjourn. I mean, come on. Yeah, me too. I think <laughs> Margaret should make it. I'm going to try. I make the motion to adjourn. It. <laughs> all right. Second. I'll, sec I'll second it. I'll second it. seconds. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you all, all right. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Good session, Adam. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Good, Thank good you, Darren. You. I'm sorry good I won't good get good to work with, with you. Oh, but you know what? Good From what see, I can Darren. see, you're going to do awesome. So I'm happy that you're joining. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope our paths cross in a different capacity then. They will. <laughs> <Excuse Yeah. me. laughs> Bye. 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 Bye-bye, everyone. Good night. Bye now. Thank you.